This episode is brought to you by Indie Film Hustle Academy, where filmmakers and screenwriters go to learn from top Hollywood industry professionals. Learn more at ifhacademy.com. Now today, guys, we have a special episode. We are going to be giving you a free preview to the new IFH Books Audible release of the best-selling book, I Made a Short Film, Now WTF Do I Do With It? A Guide to Film Festivals, Promotions, and Surviving the Ride by the award-winning filmmaker Clarissa Jacobson. Now, you might remember Clarissa from episode 538 when she came on the show to discuss her new book at the time. And I was so impressed with her that I decided to publish her audiobook through IFH Books. Now, in this episode, you're going to get a sneak peek to the audiobook and hear the first three chapters for free. Now, at the end of the episode, I'm going to tell you how to get a free copy of the new audiobook. So, without any further ado, enjoy your free preview of I Made a Short Film. Now, what the F do I do? Prologue. You are amazing. Pep talk to get you stoked to wade through this book. Congratulations. You are amazing. You dared to dream, dared to make a film, raised that money, saved that money, pinched, squeezed, and bled that money. Slaved over scripts, locations, long nights, early mornings, fears, hopes, worries, argued with the negative voice inside your head, and came out alive. Not only alive, but you finished your masterpiece, and it's awesome. Now, WTF do you do with it? Well, amazing person, I was you once. I, too, didn't know the first thing about promoting a film or getting it onto the circuit. I'd heard the tales, that politics matter, how the odds are stacked against you, what types of films are successful, what types aren't. In short, I knew the word on the street, why you couldn't succeed versus why you could. However, I don't listen to that stuff, and neither should you. It does not serve you. First lesson, whenever anything negative comes your way, and there will be a lot, ask if it serves your film. If it doesn't, ignore. That will serve you. But I digress. Anyhow, I knew the word on the street, why you couldn't succeed versus why you could. But... I also knew my film was terrific. And you must know this too about your film or you've lost already. And I had a goal. I therefore learned everything I could, battled the haters, battled my insecurities, didn't give up on my short, believed in it, kept my eyes on the prize, worked like crazy, and had an amazing run. Over 120 film festivals all over the world, 45 awards, gold standard distribution, over 100 reviews and interviews, and a wide fan base. To be clear, for all you folks who think I had a leg up in any way, I didn't. This was my first film. I had very few connections. No one on the circuit knew me or my work. Clarissa who? And I had a film that didn't fit the mold. A comedy horror genre piece coming in at the appalling length of 19 minutes. Still. It succeeded. I want you to succeed too. And I'm going to pass on all the things I learned. How to promote. How to submit to festivals. How to maximize your fest budget. How to think big. How to overcome negativity. How to laugh at rejections. How to love social media. How to get filmmaker discounts and more. Let's get started. Chapter 1. Get a goal or be a goner. Preliminary first step to keep you focused. I know this probably makes you feel like you're back in junior high, and I'm that really annoying teacher who's on your case. But seriously, what is your goal, and what are you going to do with your film? Focus, you delinquent. Trust me, kids. Having a goal is going to make everything so much easier. You put so much time into making your short, but the true marathon is the next 18 months after you finished it. There will be a massive amount of work to do to give it a life. If you look around at the films that succeed, 
It's not just about quality. There are thousands of good flicks that never see the light of day, and plenty of bad ones that do. It is also about the filmmaker's goal, knowing what they want to achieve. Some people make short films just to create. Is that you? Some people make short films to practice their craft. Is that you? Some people make short films to get interest in their career. Maybe that's you. Some people make short films as a proof of concept for their feature. Is that you? Some people make short films because they can't afford to make long ones. Is that you? Some people make short films because, well, you get my drift. Figure out why you made your film. When you figure out why you made it, you can figure out what you want from it, your goal, and that will drive you and your strategy. Why do you need a goal and a strategy? Promoting a film is a ton of work, and the only thing that will keep you doing that work, which is absolutely exhausting, is a clear reason to do so: a goal. The only way you are going to achieve that goal or have a chance at it is with strategy. If you have no goal, you are not going to do all the heavy lifting that's required to make it a success. You are going to skip doing social media. You are going to skip entering festivals that require too much work, and you are going to give up with a few rejections. Further, if you don't know what your goal is, you will not know what strategy to use to achieve what you want, and that will frustrate you. Figure out first and foremost why you made your film. For example, I'm a screenwriter who made a film, versus the director who usually makes the film. More on that in chapter ten. I wanted to get interest in my feature screenplay, Lunch Ladies, a surreal, quirky comedy horror with two middle-aged female leads. But the industry would often tell me there was no market. I got sick of hearing that nonsense. So I decided I would save my money and make a proof of concept short, based on the feature, to show the powers that be that there were plenty of people who would pay to see Lunch Ladies, and they should fund it. Every step of the process after the short was in the can was with this goal in mind. Number one, email every blogger and magazine I could find that wrote about horror and cult film to get them to review it. Why? Maybe some producer out there would read about Lunch Ladies and want to make it. Number two, prove Lunch Ladies has a market all over the world and money can be made. This is more drivel the industry loves to spout that comedy doesn't play overseas. So I wanted to enter as many fests as I could all over the world. Number three, have a great IMDb page. IMDb stands for Internet Movie Database, and I'll explain more about that in depth in Chapter Two. So, have a great IMDb page. Put up photos, film fest release dates, reviews, awards, keywords, special thanks, etc. I figured anyone wanting to finance my feature would first go to my IMDb page to check out the short. Number four, make a website. Show industry folks how I would market the film because unless they see the potential, they won't get it. In my site, I had a school store, a hairnut club, fan art page, geography lesson, announcements, and more. Number five, build a fan base. Get busy on social media so I can find my target audience and fans. It becomes crystal clear who that is when you see who follows you. I felt if I knew my target audience, I know who to market it to, and if a producer knows there's a fan base and who they are, that helps to get it made. Number six, be seen. It had to be seen, not sit on my hard drive. It must play everywhere it could, no matter how small or how big, because someone may see it and help. The goal of getting a feature made influenced all my choices in the festival run and gave me a strategy. I wanted to make the feature so bad that it kept me focused and excited, even when I was exhausted and didn't want to work. I would come home from my day job. Write blogs for my website. Each took about two hours, and I wrote over two hundred over the course of the film. I'd post on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, populate my Pinterest page, write reviewers, talk to fans, talk to other filmmakers, see other filmmakers' films, 
do interviews, and generally bop till I dropped. I am certain a huge part of Lunch Lady's success on the circuit was because of all those things that I just talked about that I actually did. The film is great. Remember, you gotta love your film. And there are a lot of films. It's the work I did that took it to the next level. Have I achieved my goal of getting the feature made? Not yet, but I'm still trying and having a great ride. Who knows what the future brings and when it will happen or if it opens the door to something else. So remember, why did you make your film and what is your goal? Get a flipping goal. Chapter 2. Be prepared. Press kits, websites, social media, and being a goody two-shoes. I admit it, I was the goody two-shoes who always had her book report done a week before. Sometimes two weeks before. Okay, fine, three weeks. I'm not a procrastinator, so it has always been easy for me to do things ahead of time. You have it harder if you aren't a goody two-shoes, but it's a must for your sanity on the circuit. Press kits, your website, IMDb page, social media handles, promotional pieces. You want to have that stuff done before you start your festival run. Not while you're making your film. <laughs> Don't get all crazy. But when you finish the film. Why? Stop arguing with me. I'm trying to help you. The reason why, hardhead, is because you are going to be so busy promoting, getting into festivals, and being a world traveler that you won't have time to do anything else. If you don't have time, then all the stuff you procrastinated on that you could have done before the run is going to be sloppy, which is why most press kits I see look like a four-year-old kid and their dog did them. Those filmmakers waited until the festival or publication asked them for a press kit, and they either did one of two things. One, they had a nervous breakdown at the thought of adding more work on top of their crazy festival schedule, and they never handed one in, therefore missing a huge promotional opportunity. Or two, they took a shot of tequila and made their press kit in a three-hour panic. That's not for you. Press kits with typos, out-of-focus photos, bad layout. Not for you. Missing a chance to promote your film because you haven't completed work you could have done earlier? Nope, not for you. Having a nervous breakdown because you're overloaded with work when you're supposed to be charming and witty on the festival run? Nope, not for you. You aren't going to do anything amateur. Because if you do, no matter how good your film is, you are promoting that you are an amateur. And you aren't. And always remember, keep your goal in mind. If your goal is to get drunk at film festivals, take your clothes off, and flip off the establishment, then hey, you don't need to have an IMDb page. You may need a sexy outfit, though. Choose what you have to tackle. I had to tackle them all, based on how it furthers your goal. Branding. What is branding? It's how you market your product, your film, and make it distinctive. You don't have to have your brand fully developed, but it's super smart to have an idea of what it is so you get off to the right start and don't have to backtrack. There's a ton of stuff that can go into branding, but I just take it to the simplest level. What is the essence of your film? Now bottle it. Lunch Ladies is a rebellious, bloody, yet full of heart playful, loud, and takes place in a jacked high school. Therefore, those specifics became my brand. For example, I designed the Lunch Ladies website with a high school motif. The cast and crew are listed under roll call. Reviews are listed under grades. There's a school store and a study hall with teasers to watch. The writing is in-your-face, liberal, fun, and can be offensive, like the film. Once you have a concept, stick with it and your ideas will evolve into a specific, identifiable look which captures the heart of the film. Be consistent. Use the same fonts, colors, logos, and writing style, and you'll be golden. IMDb. IMDb, for those of you who aren't addicted to reading banal information about movies and movie stars, is the Internet Movie Database. You want your short listed on IMDb because it's the go-to place that people look for information about a film. It's going to move your short up in the search on the internet, and it's going to give it legitimacy. I started my IMDb page immediately after the film wrapped, well before it was edited, because my cast and crew worked so hard for so little 
the least I could do was get their credit up. Who knows what jobs it could help them land? Get people's credits up as soon as possible. After that's accomplished, add to your page as much as you can, as often as you can. Get a poster up. Get a trailer up. Get your special thanks up. Get photos up. Get your synopsis up. Put them up now. Later on, you will spend so much time adding reviews, wins, festivals, etc. You won't have time. Your IMDb page will be the place you visit constantly throughout your film's life by keeping it up to date. The initial process of getting all the names and credits correct takes work, so do it now. You won't have time later, and your cast and crew are going to be irked if they've waited a year and you don't have their credits up. Not cool. Here's a side note. Email every single person on your cast and crew and ask them to send you their direct IMDb link, unless this is their first credit. If you've got a John Smith on your crew and you link it to the wrong profile because there's 30 John Smith profiles, it's a nightmare to change. Trust me, I hooked up profiles to the wrong people at first. Learn from my excruciating, time-wasting experience. I'm not going to lie. IMDb is a beast. You will be so frustrated from the learning curve. <sighs> Wait until you have to tackle posting your wins. But you'll be so frustrated you'll Swear your head off, scream, wallow in self-pity, cry, and send nasty emails to some employee at IMDb who will ignore you. It's super confusing. In fact, you may need a PhD to figure it out. But just keep at it like I did, and you will learn to tame the beast that is IMDb. Once you get the hang of it, you'll love it. Nothing is more gratifying than adding new information about your film and seeing it show up for the world to see. In addition, once you really get going, the IMDb people begin to know you're short. They probably hate you because you're constantly updating and making work for them, but who cares? You're a self-centered filmmaker. The point is, eventually, instead of it taking two weeks for information to be approved and go up, it will take two days. Because the powers that be know you are filling the page with real information, not lying and padding it, and they will get your updates up ASAP. Press kits. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Press kits, or EPKs, electronic press kits for those in the know, are no fun to make, and it takes a while to get them right. You have to have patience. But that's why you're doing your press kit now, right? Don't be overwhelmed. I know there's a ton of ideas on how to make a press kit, and that can freak you out. It did me. But listen, just pick a template that speaks to you. Or make up your own style. No one cares. There are no press kit police. All that people care about is how it's organized, how it looks, and what it says. There's no right or wrong way. Be creative. Be smart. Make it look good. Represent your film. My press kit took about a month to complete. Choose people you trust to edit it. They'll find the mistakes you miss. Push your ego aside. Get feedback and listen. Think of it as a job resume. Make it as perfect as you can. And if you have 120 people in the cast and crew like I did, you're going to misspell a ton of names, and that's disrespectful to those that help make your dream come to life. So get everyone's name right. Check them over and over before you send it out. For my press kit, I decided not to list my reviews, although you may want to. I had so many, I didn't want to be constantly updating it. But often I will attach the best ones when I send the kit out, depending on who's looking at it. Also. The length of your kit is dependent on you. Mine was long because I had so many cast and crew. Also, I like to talk a lot, if you haven't noticed. If you want to check out my press kit, go to lunchladiesmovie.com backslash contact and click the download link. I think it's pretty good. If you don't like it, geez, what are you, the press kit police? Social media handles. If you don't despise social media, then wow, you are ahead of the game. Most everyone hates some type of social media, and you have to have them all. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, Vimeo, etc., etc. So stop whining like a baby. Nothing is going to get in the way of your goal. Especially, not something as banal as social media. The key to social media is, and I'll talk about this more in depth later, you must find a way to love it. Social media is the kingpin of all your promotion. Love it like unicorns, puppies, and rainbows. 
Take it a little at a time. You don't have to have a huge following right away. You don't even need to start posting until the film is on its run. You don't need to do all the social media channels at once. You can build them a little at a time. But get started. Open the accounts. Create your handles. Populate your photos. Because once you're on the circuit, you will need to promote, and you won't have time to set it up. For your handles, try to remain consistent so people can easily find your film. If your Facebook is the same as your Instagram, you only have to tell people one handle, and that's easy to remember. Some people only have Facebook. Some only Instagram. Some both. You need all types of social media to really promote or you will miss opportunities. So make the handles as uniform as possible. Purchase your domain for your website first, if you decide to make a website. Then base all your handles on the site's name. If you do it the other way around, you may find that the handles you've set up are not available for your site. Important. Make sure your website name is 15 characters or less. For my domain, I chose lunchladiesmovie.com because my first choice of lunchladies.com was taken. In retrospect, I should have chosen lunchladiesfilm.com because Twitter only allows 15 characters. Therefore, at lunchladiesmovie is the handle for all my social media except for Twitter, which is at lunchladiesfilm. So learn from my screw-ups. Website. My website is my favorite promotional tool, and I highly suggest making one and starting it now, as it takes a while to get it up and running. It took about a month learning curve to figure out how to build it, but it has been invaluable. A website will be your go-to spot to send people. It has your social media, your blogs, if you blog, your announcements, your trailer, your cast, crew, and synopsis. Everything is there in one beautiful place. Start with picking a great domain, 15 characters or less, remember? There are many companies you can purchase it from, but I recommend Wix.com because it's a one-stop shop. You can use their templates to build a website for free, then purchase the domain and hosting from them at the same time. Easy. If possible, make the website yourself. It will save you tons of money because you will constantly need to make updates to your site. If you don't learn how to do it, you will always be paying someone to make these simple changes for you and then waiting around for them to do it. For those of you who have never made a website like I hadn't and don't understand the difference between hosting and domain like I didn't, think of it like real estate. The website is your house. The domain is its address. The hosting is the land it sits on. How to pick a domain. You will want your first choice but often that's already been bought by someone else, so you may have to settle like I did. Remember? I wanted lunchladies.com and ended up with lunchladiesmovie.com. Once you've got a domain you're happy with, it's time to build your website. There are many out there that allow you to use their pre-made templates, but Wix had great reviews and was cheap, so I took a chance. Good call. I pretty much love it. The support is super helpful, and the site I created from their template looks legit. Pay for your hosting, and off you go. If you're really strapped for cash, you can opt for Wix's free hosting. However, with the free service, they print Wix on the headers and footers. It looks super amateur. So I say cough up the cash and pay for the hosting. Of course, if you're already choking from the aftermath of your overinflated film budget, then okay, go for the freebie. Some site is better than no site. Promotional items. The two things you want to have before your festival run are your postcards and business cards. If you're strapped for cash, opt for the postcards. Eventually, you will want both because they are useful for different reasons. Postcards are super important because that's what you will use to promote your short at festivals. Hate to be the bearer of bad news, but most audiences aren't going to seek your film out. I know it's awesome, but there's a lot of awesome films. Folks attend fests to support friends see certain genres, or something specific, and your baby probably isn't even on their radar. You will get on their radar by having postcards displayed and handing them out. Most fests will have a table where filmmakers can put their cards, and people do pick up cards from the table and see films that interest them. Many will see your movie just from you handing them a card and introducing yourself. I highly suggest printing postcards no bigger than 3x5 or 4x6. I had a larger size, 
And though they were really cool looking, they were a huge pain. They didn't fit in my purse. They didn't fit in my pocket. And I'm sure people would pick them up and be annoyed at how flipping large they were and leave them in the bathroom after peeing. Print your image on one side of the postcard, and the back will have two columns. One column will be blank. This is where you will put your labels and or addresses if you end up mailing them to specific people. And I'm going to discuss this more in Chapter 7. The other column will have your concise log line, your website, if you have one, and your information on how to reach you. I know this is a major duh, but I have seen postcards with nothing but the name of the film in the log line. I envisioned some three-piece suit picking it up and saying, This film is genius! I must invest five million in the sequel! Uh, who do I call? Forget it. I'll invest in that condo instead. Business cards are needed primarily for when you meet industry people. Sure, you can give them a postcard, but it shouldn't have your personal info on it. They sit on festival tables for the world to see, and you don't want some stalker calling you on your cell phone. You do, however, want Guillermo del Toro calling you on your cell phone. So you will want a business card with personal information on it for Guillermo. Business cards are also great for night on the town when you don't want to carry bulky postcards or brazenly promote your film. You will meet someone new, possibly someone hot. Trade cards and they will say, Oh wow, you made a movie? What's it about? Can I buy you another cocktail? Everyone you meet is a chance for promotion. And of course, a hot date. Have your cards professionally done. I know it's tempting to save money, but don't print them yourself on that dot matrix printer hooked up to your ancient Commodore VIC-20. Cheap cards just make you and your film look cheap. Plus, there's a certain pride in having a nice-looking business card. It feels good passing them out and gives you a boost of confidence. It's perfectly fine to wait until you are in your first festival before printing anything but it's best to have the artwork ready to go because it will take time to get it right. This goes for posters as well, which you will want once you start the run. Printing is the least of it. You can do a rush if needed, but rushing artwork is always a bad idea. More promotional items that you can start thinking about include pins, pencils, stickers, and other types of swag. It's not necessary to have swag, but I do think it gives the film a push and pace for itself in the end. I had some fun things when I started and added more during the run. Chapter 3. Spreadsheets for Success Get organized. Prevent screw-ups. I'm going to teach you to set up some super organized spreadsheets, which will maximize your money and chances at success on the circuit. It's not glamorous, but it will prevent screw-ups. Disclaimer, if you are as anal as me, then you have permission to skip ahead whenever it gets boring. But for the rest of you delinquents, pay attention. The Film Festival Grid First, open an Excel spreadsheet or scribble in a three-ring spiral notebook if you're a Luddite. Excel will be easiest as you will want to sort columns, but if you don't have the program, that's okay too. Having any list will be a huge help. Title it Film Festival Dates. Why do you need this spreadsheet? You need it so you can keep track of all the rules and dates to enter. Every film fest has a ton of rules and entry dates, and they are all different. You will have to read all those boring rules and keep them straight, because you don't want to waste money entering your film in a festival where it can't be accepted. They'll still take your money. They'll just disqualify you. With a film festival grid, you can easily track everything so no mistakes are made. Your early bird submission dates, that is the cheapest time to enter, which festivals coincide, what length of film is accepted, and more. You will also need to track which festivals need premieres. Some festivals, not all, require premieres, and there are several types of premieres. World premiere, national premiere, international premiere, regional premiere, and who knows what else. The first time your film plays, that's its world premiere. That will also be either your national or international premiere, depending on where it plays. Then there are regional premieres, festivals that will only demand that you haven't screened in their city before. Premieres are a pain. Your fest run will probably last a year and a half if you are doing great. It can last longer. But my feeling is, get out. Don't overstay your welcome. Go into distribution when your time is up and don't hang around like a 22-year-old dude hanging around high school stalking hot freshmen. 
Of course, if some hot freshman wants to date you, who are you to say no? So sure, be in fest if they pursue you versus you pursuing them. That's not overstaying your welcome. You're hot. What can you say? If you ascribe to this way of thinking, and if you don't, that's okay, you can be a creepy old dude stalking hot freshmen. Seriously, no judgments. Insert sheets on your spreadsheet for two years. One for this year, one for next. Because this year, you won't make the due dates to enter some festivals and will have to enter next year. To recap, your pages on your spreadsheet are number one, this year, number two, next year. If you're into overkill like me, add one more page called At a Glance. This will be where you can easily see which festivals you got in and which you didn't. Here, you will add all festivals you enter in one column, and in the other two columns, you will pull from that list which festivals you got in and which you didn't. Only do this if you are nerdy like me and like to know your percentage of success and failure or which festivals you have entered at a glance. Here's what your spreadsheet tab should look like. This year will be the festivals you will enter this year. Next year will be the festivals you will enter next year. Duh. Now it's time to organize both sheets exactly the same. Number one, title the first column, Film Fests. Here you will list the name of the festival, what platform you submitted it on, platforms will be discussed in chapter five, and when the festival notifies filmmakers of acceptance. This will help you when festivals are rude and don't have the courtesy to tell you your film wasn't accepted. If the due date is passed and you never heard from them, you can be certain they want you to get lost. It's good to know when to get lost and stop dreaming you got in their festival. Number two, title the second column International. This is where you make sure the festival takes international entries if it's outside your country. Sometimes you will be so excited to enter your film and you forget to read the rules and you pay and then realize they don't take international films. They will never refund your money, trust me. Basically, this is an idiot reminder to make sure you check. Number three, title the third column Oscar. Only a handful of festivals are Oscar qualifying. If you win one, you can be in the running to get nominated. There are other ways to qualify, but this is the simplest. This helps with decision making when or if you are low on cash. If you really want an Oscar, you can check that column to see which ones are Oscar qualifiers and can weigh their cost against the others that aren't. Number four, title the fourth column location. This is important because some film festivals require premieres, as I mentioned earlier, and premieres are always based on location, so you need to keep track of what area of the world you submit to. For example, most festivals in Austin, Texas are notorious for requiring a premiere. If you decide you want to be an Austin Film Fest, wait to enter South by Southwest. Because if you get in Austin, you can't be in South by Southwest anyhow. And you'll know South by Southwest is in Austin because you put the location in your spreadsheet. Nothing is more aggravating than paying $50 to enter South by Southwest, getting in Austin, then getting in South by Southwest, and realizing you flushed $50 down the toilet because they won't let you screen because you already screened in Austin. We'll talk about premieres more in Chapter 4. Number 5. Title the fifth column website. You want the festival's website here so you can click it up easily. It will save you time in the long run as you will want to check their website many times if you get in or see who was accepted if you don't get in. Number 6. The next six columns, 6 through 11, will be the entry dates and fees of the festivals. Title the columns respectively. Early bird, early bird fee, regular, regular fee, final, final fee. This will help you strategize your money. You can obviously sort your spreadsheet many different ways depending on what you need. One way you will sort it is by early bird entry dates. These are the dates you want to enter by and will keep you on your toes to never miss a deadline. The reason you list the fees even though admittedly it's time consuming to do this, is so you can easily keep track of the money you are spending. And you can weigh whether you want to wait to enter at a later date if you don't have the cash at the moment. Sometimes early bird entry fees are not that much cheaper than regular fees. Sometimes they are similar. Sometimes they are drastically different. 
If you know the consequences of not entering a festival by a certain time, you will be much more likely to make better decisions with your money. Then, once a week like clockwork, sort your spreadsheet by early bird entry date and submit to the ones that are due. You will never miss an early bird entry that way. Number seven, title the 12th column, Festival Begin. This is important so you know which festivals coincide in case you get in two that run at the same time. This happens a lot. You can check the dates so you can wisely choose which festival you will attend. That way, you won't annoy the programmer by gushing that you are going, then backing out when you realize there's another fest you'd prefer. Number eight. Title the 13th column, Festival End. It's good to know the length of the festival. As mentioned, sometimes you get in festivals that coincide, but sometimes one lasts three days while the other is 12, so you can actually go to both. Why don't you put the festival beginning and ending all in one column, such as April 15th through 19th, like I did the first time? Because then you can't sort the columns separately, which you may need to. Learn from my screw-ups. Number nine. Title the 14th column length. This is how long the film can be for acceptance into the festival. If your short is 15 minutes and the festival only takes films up to 10, you cannot enter, but they still will take your money and disqualify you. See a pattern? Once again, if they get your money, it's theirs forever. If you find out the festival is not a fit, I suggest still keeping it on your spreadsheet and graying it out. You will enter so many festivals, you will forget which ones you researched and you will waste time unless it's on your spreadsheet. Hmm, I almost forgot Blah Blah Fest. Why didn't I enter Blah Blah Fest? Blah Blah Fest is awesome. Let me look up the rules. Oh, that's right. I tried to enter Blah Blah Fest two months ago, but it only takes films that are Blah Blah. I wish I had remembered. Now I just wasted 10 minutes researching Blah Blah Fest a second time. So everything you research, keep it in your spreadsheet. Number 10. Title the 15th column, Premiere Status. Do they require a premiere? You may even want to consider having a separate spreadsheet for premieres to keep things in line, because this can get confusing fast. Number 11. Title the 16th column, Notes. This is for anything else, like, hey, this festival pays for a hotel if I'm accepted. Or, hey, this festival doesn't give awards. Forget it. I need awards. Or, this one needs English subtitles to submit. Or, they only take films made in the last 18 months. If you are a good little rule follower, your spreadsheet will look fantastic. Excellent job. You'll have your film festival grid set up. But wait, you aren't done. You also need to make one more spreadsheet, the viewing grid. This is where you will list every single person outside festivals that you send the film. It will come in handy time and again. Put anyone you sent your short to here. Industry people, social media folks you've met, reviewers, press, their handles, their emails, the dates you sent them your film, where they are from, notes on who they are. Create it now. You will need it when you want to ask people to vote for the film if it's up for an award, or to spread the word when you get distribution. You now have a cultivated list of people to ask for help, complete with emails. You will also need it if you can't remember who someone is down the line and they are gushing to you. You can look on your viewing grid and know who they are. Lastly, you will need it when you make the feature as there will be so many who will tell you during the run that they want to be part of it when it happens. You may not be able to hire them. Oftentimes, we don't have a say when a film gets produced. But you will have their names and how to reach them if you do have a say. The viewing grid is incredibly useful. Now that you've made these really boring spreadsheets that are super useful, let's enter some festivals. Wait, what's that you say? You don't have a clue which festivals to enter? Except for, please no, please don't say it. I said, don't say it. Don't say Sundance. Ugh, Sundance. I mean, okay, whatever. Sundance. Fine. Enter Sundance. Sundance. But listen, Sundance, quit saying Sundance. 
There's a whole world of incredible, terrific festivals out there that aren't Sundance that are just waiting for your film. So let's talk about some of those in the next chapter. I really hope you guys like that free preview. Now, if you want to pick up the book, all you got to do is head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash short film book, and that'll take you straight to Audible. That's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash short film book. But if you don't have an Audible account and you want to sign up for one, you can get this book for free. All you got to do is go to FreeFilmBook.com. Sign up for a free account on Audible and you get one free audiobook, which of course you can make it this book and download it for free there. Listen to it and enjoy the book. So that's your little free hack. Go to freefilmbook.com if you want to sign up for a free account on Audible and get this book for free. Or you could just buy it if you already have an account and just want to buy this book. Head over to indiefilmhustle.com forward slash short film book. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. As always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. Stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.